Hey everyone, what's up? So I hope you're all staying safe indoors during this COVID-19 pandemic. Last year, I got a TBS Micro TX module and a couple of nano receivers. But the Crossfire system has been around since as early as 2015. Just to get it out of the way, I did check out the R9 system, at least on paper. Both the Crossfire system and the R9 system are 900 megahertz long range systems, uh, have similar latency with the R9 being uh, slower by just 10 milliseconds, which I don't think I'm even going to, uh, to notice. Uh, both modules cost around $70. And um, on the R9 system, you don't need to install an inverter mod on your QX7, X10S, or X12 to get the maximum baud rate. However, what made the decision for me was the ease of updating the firmware, uh, the general reliability and polish that the Crossfire system has. When I was searching Google and YouTube for guides, manuals and references for getting myself started on Crossfire, um, I found that the official Crossfire manual was not as detailed and complete as I hoped it would be. And the guides that I, I, the guides that I found just incrementally built themselves across multiple videos from when they first introduced Crossfire to, and, and whenever a new function or a new update was introduced and some info was already outdated. So I set out to create a guide which, like most of my other videos, had to be first and foremost useful to me. Um, my wife can attest that I watch my own build and how-to videos and that's how I would rate a video if it's good or useful or not. When I set to actually record the video, I ran into so many problems and I felt that what I had recorded wasn't so good, so I abandoned it for almost a year. Now that we're on lockdown, I finally had the time to revamp everything and retake some shots and now I have a guide that I'm uh, actually happy with. I'm gonna put some timestamps uh, down in the description so you can skip to a particular section. But if you're just getting started or just planning to get started on, uh, on Crossfire, then you would, might want to bookmark this video and watch the whole video. If you have a Charanis QX7, an X10S Horus, or an X12, then I will have a separate video showing you how to install the inverter mod on your radio. And uh, I'll be uploading that right after I upload this one. So um, I'll link to that video in the description. So stay tuned and let's get started with Crossfire. This is what you get when you order the TBS Crossfire Micro TX and if you open it, well, of course, you're going to get the, the TBS Crossfire Micro Module. So this fits in the JR module at the back of your QX7, in my case, or your X90 or whatever. It has an included Immortal T antenna, which is an SMA plug and it goes there, right there. But you also get a small PCB, and you would solder this inside your uh, inside your QX7. If you have QX7, so that you can get that full baud rate and achieve um, the lowest latency that you can have with a Crossfire. Because otherwise, you're uh, you're still gonna get long range, but uh, the, the the baud rate will be limited if you don't do this on your QX7. If you have a Tyrannus X9D though, you won't have a problem, you, can, you still use the Crossfire at full baud rate even without this mod. So this is my QX7, this is the back of my QX7, you just pop off the, the cover of the JR module bay and just move this 3D printed um, stand out of the way and you just pop this on and that is it. And you may, might want to screw in your, your Immortal T antenna over here. Alright, so even with my uh, stand, it doesn't get in the way, so at least that's good. I can still use, use, my, use it with my stand. This is the Crossfire Nano Receiver, and as you can see, it's really tiny. Slightly bigger than the FreeSky RXSR and XM Receiver, and slightly smaller than an XM Plus. On the end, you will see these four pads which you can solder directly to, and which can also be used as through holes for the included 4-pin header. It comes with a couple of silicon wires, the 4-pin header you saw earlier, a piece of clear heat shrink, as well as the standard Crossfire antenna. If you get the SE version, it comes with the Immortal T antenna instead. So we're going to be uh, soldering this uh, TBS Crossfire 
Nano RX uh, to to Sierra. So Sierra right now has a Free Sky Furious FPV LR 1000D here, and um, you know it's it's a, it's a typical S bus receiver. So you you put, you solder it into your ground five volts and then S S uh, S bus, and then um, for if you have a smart port telemetry set up, you have that on a spare UART. With a crossfire, you have to note that. Uh, the S bus pins are usually um, S bus pads are usually an inverted pad, and uh, the crossfire is a non transmits a non inverted signal. So you can't uh, solder your crossfire here. Your S bus, you have to look for a spare UART. So if, if depending on your uh, on your flight controller board, this is the Omnibus F4 V5, and I'll, I'll, I'll link uh, my review in the description of this Omnibus F4 V5 here somewhere. Right now, what I'm just going to be doing is I'm um, just going to be using UART1 here, where actually where my smart port is um, soldered to. I'm just going to remove that, and then I'm, I'm going to be uh, soldering this in uh, to to UART1, and then I'm just going to be removing this uh, my this this free sky receiver from the SPS. Here's another example of soldering the Crossfire Nano receiver this time to a Helio Spring All-in-One flight controller. So we solder the red wire to 5 volts and then we solder the black wire to ground just like any other receiver. Next we pre-tin the UART, uh, UART 3 pads, uh, both the RX and the TX. And then we get uh, the white wire which is channel 1 and solder that to the UART RX pad. And the yellow wire which is channel 2 goes to the UART TX pad. Next, you need to go to the Team Black Sheep website. You can just Google TBS Agent or TBS Crossfire Micro TX. Once at the Crossfire Micro TX page, you can scroll down and look for the Agent X link in the download section. Or you can also click on the Software Shop category on the left sidebar. Once you're at the TBS Agent X page, you can scroll down and choose between the Windows version and the Mac OS version. I've already downloaded it, so we just need to install it on this computer by double clicking on the installer we downloaded. Okay, Agent X is now running and we just need to plug in our Crossfire TX into our USB port. And after a couple of seconds, you should see your Crossfire TX in Agent X. Even if you have your transmitter turned off or even if your Crossfire module isn't plugged into the module bay, it should turn on. Let's click on Manage. Definitely something that a regular receiver doesn't have is the capability to bind via your computer. And from Agent X, you can also change different settings of your Crossfire module, like the region, max power, dynamic power, and frequency. Each Crossfire device has a unique identifier, whether it's a module, a receiver, or a VTX. So once you bind your receivers to your module, they will also show up in the TBS Agent X app. And when you plug in your module, and if any of your receivers are powered up, they will also appear here as online. Once again, let's click Manage on our Crossfire module and then click on Firmware. From here you'll see what version of firmware you're on and you can also upgrade to a newer firmware or roll back to an older version. Similarly, we can also do the same for the receiver's firmware. There are plenty of settings you can change in your receiver, so do take a look at that as well. Before anything else, you need to open up OpenTX Companion and go to the Settings menu and click on Settings. And here we need to install Lua scripts by checking on the, clicking on Lua as well as Lua C, which is compiled Lua scripts. And I'm pretty surprised this isn't mentioned in the, in the Crossfire manual because this will save you a lot of headaches. Uh, Lua C basically allows you to run your scripts uh, with less RAM and more reliability, but yeah, uh, right, better. So you don't have to worry about this in OpenTX 2.3.1 and later because it's going to be installed by default. So we need to click on the download button up here somewhere. Uh, not that one here. Okay, we need to click on the downloads button and the file name is going to be depending on what settings you chose in the previous uh, window. So we need to click on the download firmware button which is going to prompt you where you want to save the, the file, the firmware that you want then uh, I've already installed this before um, so I'm just gonna click on save and overwrite that old uh, that old file so it's gonna take a uh, just a very quick download and then it'll offer you to install it on your transmitter now these are the default settings so you can just go ahead and click on write to TX 
and I don't have my TX uh, connected but this is how you go about doing it. So let's take a look at uh, the default settings. Note that this is, open TX. Uh, this is my QX7 has not yet been, been modded. Warning. Yep I know. So let's just go down to the bottom. Right, so if you want to turn on a crossfire, you need to turn off the internal radio first. And then, now the crossfire CRSF protocol now appears. So you can see that option in the hardware tab, in your radio, uh, radio setup, uh, radio settings. So the max BODs, or the, this is the maximum BOD rate that, uh, that is set by default, and it's set to 400,000. Now, um, if you haven't done your Low mod, battery. oh dar darn! All right, so I have to charge my batteries. So if you haven't done your the mod for your QX7, you're gonna have to lower this down to 115,200, or else it will keep giving you the uh, telemetry loss uh, problem. So uh, that's why you have to set it. To, uh, that's why you have to do the mod. All right, so now we're going to go through the process of binding with a crossfire system. Here I have my Crossfire Nano RX and you don't even need to have it hooked up to a flight controller as long as you can give it a 5 volt power supply. So here I'm just going to plug it in. Now unlike your typical Free Sky or Fly Sky receiver, uh, you don't actually need to hold the bind button on your Crossfire receiver and if it's never been bound before, it's going to be all, to start up already in bind mode. So you can see now it's a blinking green. And now here we have our QX7 and we have our micro module uh, attached to the back. Now, unlike with a free sky, like for example, an, an XSR or an XM Plus, uh, or any free sky with a D16, you normally uh, associate that receiver with the model on that you have on your radio. But actually, the QX7 has no idea, or you know, has no way of knowing which receiver the Crossfire micro module is talking to. So. Um, it's actually the, the crossfire module that uh, binds to each of the receiver and uh, it doesn't actually tell the QX7 which receiver it's signed to as long as it's, bind, it's bound which means that um, you can have any model here on your QX7 that uses crossfire and you can use that to bind to any crossfire receiver and uh, so we're, we're just going to go into settings so here you can see that I already have crossfire uh, crossfire selected as the external receiver. You don't see any bind button here because you need the um, you, you need either to put your crossfire module in bind mode using you know if you have the full module you'll have uh, controls here at the back, or you can use the TBS agent uh, to put it into bind mode. Or in our case, we're just going to go into our crossfire scripts, crossfire Lua scripts and hold that and execute so we are just going to put it into bind mode here going to bind mode so immediately you can see that uh, our receiver turned red and it's going to ask you if you want to update the receiver you can just click press enter or you can also press the blinking the slow blinking blue button here if you press this that's going to update the receiver it's gonna take a little bit of time, not not very long, but uh, after it's done, you're already good to go. You're bound and uh, you're ready to go to the next step. So, which uh, which firmware the the your module is going to update your receiver to will depend on which uh, firmware your your uh, your module has. So, uh, yeah, so it might be worth uh, noting that you can also do this in TBS Agent. So, right now we've just finished. Uh, uploading the firmware onto our receiver and now it's finished updating, finished binding and now we have a solid green color, a solid green LED on our Crossfire Nano RX and so we are good to go. Now we're going to set up our flight controller for our Crossfire receiver. You'll need to run your configurator whether it's Betaflight, Butterflight or in this case Emu Flight. You'll also need to plug in your LiPo later when we test it. So now let's plug in our flight controller to our USB and click on connect. First thing we need to do is to go to our ports tab and make sure that Serial RX is enabled on the correct UART and telemetry, sensors and peripherals are all disabled. And then hit save and reboot. 
Next, we go into the Configuration tab and scroll down to the Receiver section. It will still be a serial-based receiver, but we need to change it to CRSF, and then hit Save and Reboot. So now we want to test if everything is working as expected. You would now need to plug in a LiPo to power the receiver, like you would with a FreeSky receiver. And you would also need to have your transmitter with a crossfire module, which I assume your receiver is already bound to, and then we go to the Receiver tab. Here we just wiggle our sticks to see if everything's responding as expected. And I also have my RSSI channel to AUX5, which is set to channel 9 of my receiver. So if you've set it to another channel, then make sure you select the appropriate AUX channel here. Once again, we click on Manage on our, one of our Crossfire Nano receivers, and we head on over to General Settings. And the first item there is the mode, where you can choose between 8 channels and 12 channels. If you choose 8 channels, you're obviously going to get 4 less channels, but you're also going to get a lower latency, so you're going to get a faster response. Now earlier I mentioned that I had my RSSI and LQ on uh, set to output on channel 9 or AUX5. So we head on over to channel map and we scroll down and look for channel 9. If you click on that, you can see that you can set it to output either RSSI only or link quality only or a combination of RSSI and LQ where you're going to get uh, the lower of the two values. So if you have a lower RSSI, then you're going to get RSSI. If you have a lower link quality, then you're also going to get uh, the link quality. Um, okay, so uh, here's a neat little trick that I want to show you. So we head on back to the general tab and we click on that and on the mode, we can set it back to eight channels. And what happens is that you are going to get the, the lower, the benefits of the lower latency. But you're still going to get the RSSI and link quality that you had that, that's on channel 9, even if you set it on 8 channel mode. Now all of these settings are accessible directly from your radio uh, via Lua scripts. You don't have to do this via Agent X. Uh, you don't have to connect your, uh, your module to your computer. You can you change these settings directly via your Tyrannus uh, X90 or QX7. Now if you're running Betaflight 4.1, uh, you can access uh, RSSI and LQ directly by, by the OSD tab and you don't need to do, to do any of these. But if you're like me, you're probably going to have uh, some older quads that are running older versions of Betaflight. So I'm hoping that this information will still be useful to some of you. First, let's go to, we need to hold the menu button and then click on page. And here from the SD card uh, menu, we click on the first item which is Crossfire with the center button. And then you can see here that there are, uh, there's a crossfire.lua and a crossfire.lua C. And uh, this one appears if you have the Lua C or the Lua compiler uh, installed on your OpenTX firmware, which uh, I showed you earlier. So let's run the crossfire.lua C by holding the center key. You click on execute, it's gonna load it a little bit. So right now it's, it, it detects the module because it's uh, plugged into the radio. Uh, let's let's uh, plug in a lipo to our pod. So shortly after, uh, the Nano RX is also going to appear, and we just uh, need to click on that as well. And it's going to show you all of the all of all of the, uh, the settings that you could see as well on the TBS Agent X. So you have mode, telemetry, RF profile, failsafe, and all of the output maps and channel maps are also here. So going back out, we can click on the micro TX. And you can also set all of your uh, all of the settings here. Uh, again, you can set this either on Agent X or here directly on your radio. If you did not have Lua C installed, you would only have this crossfire.lua. Uh, actually, if when you first start your uh, radio, your, your radio with your new firmware, the dot Lua C will uh, this is um, created when you first start these uh, these scripts. So um, if you try if we try the crossfire.lua without the Lua C, without the C, it, it actually runs slower and consumes more resources because it's not a compiled uh, executable. Uh, it has to run as a script. So if you use that this is going to load a little bit slower. Well right now it's loading but uh, I've had problems before where um, this menu doesn't even load. So um, if you're having problems with uh, with the dot Lua, then check if you have uh, checked Lua C on uh, on the firmware update. 
of your OpenTX radio. So there you have it. I really hope that this video has been really useful to you. Um, I put a lot of effort and a lot of time, maybe a little bit too much time, into the making of this video. And I'd really appreciate it if you can give it a like and make sure you're subscribed. And maybe you can sh also share this to your friends. So anyway, as always, keep building, keep flying, and stay home during this COVID-19 pandemic.